Good morning. This is Monday Morning Motivation. For the past few weeks, I've been talking on prayer from Matthew chapter 6. And if there's one takeaway that I would want you to get from this series is that while there are some essential parts to prayer, it is not about a particular style. Effective prayer is not so much about how you pray or how long you pray, but rather about your right relationship with God. One author said, Our prayers may be awkward. Our attempt may be feeble. But since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. This is absolutely true. And this is why we can come to God knowing that he always hears us. In fact, he welcomes us to come to him as often as we like, for he's never too busy for us and he will never ignore the simplest cry of our heart. He doesn't require that we come dressed perfectly either, having a particular physical posture or be in a specific physical setting to approach him in prayer, no. Consider Jonah, who cried out in desperation from out of the most unpleasant places possible, the belly of a large fish. If our physical setting must be one that is specific, pleasant and fitting, Jonah certainly would have been doomed. Or consider the tax collector in the parable Jesus spoke of in Luke chapter 18. This man was hated by others because of his occupation, and he knew this. His posture was one of such humility that he didn't even think he was worthy enough to come into the temple or to look up to heaven in prayer, but kept his distance, eyes downward, beating his chest to show his penitence and sincerity. In contrast, the Pharisee of a respected religious order and the teacher of the law of Moses stood confidently. And I wouldn't be surprised if he stood in some uh, specific or special spot where he would have been clearly seen. But which of these went away heard and justified by God? Clearly, you don't need to come to God in any, in any perfection or having it all together, but you do need to come humbly, worshipfully, and in sincerity. Another aspect to prayer is the Holy Spirit. He is our perfect teacher. He does not only teach us how to pray, but he also guides us in what to say, even when to pray, and who and what to pray for. This is what causes prayer to be so dynamic and powerful. As you yield to the Holy Spirit, you become a fit vessel for his use. One through whom he can freely flow, causing heaven to impact earth and producing marvelous results. And here's something to consider with regard to the Holy Spirit. There are times you go to pray and you're so overwhelmed by a situation that you don't know what to say. It is so comforting to know that the Holy Spirit understands exactly what you want to say. And even if all you can do is cry or just say, oh God, help. He will intercede to the Father on your behalf, praying exactly what you want to say. So when you don't know how or what to pray for, the Spirit will pray on your behalf. Another vitally important aspect of prayer is using the word of God. In his teaching on prayer in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus referenced scripture, even though he didn't say which book. Now there are those who can accurately reference book, chapter, and verse, but please don't let this intimidate you if if you're unable to. It is far more important to know and quote the scripture than it is for you to use book and chapter references. And this is what I mean when I, when I speak of praying the word. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 tells us that the word is the sword of the spirit, the one clear weapon in the armor of God. But what does praying the word look like? 
It is reading a passage of scripture contemplatively and unhurried and meditating on it, turning it over in your thoughts as well as speaking it to yourself as you read or listen to it. And as you do this, you ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you through his word. And this can even be just one single verse. Then, as you do this, you take that same portion of scripture and you use it in prayer to God. It is that simple. The more you practice this, the easier it becomes. Remember, the Holy Spirit is your teacher and it is his desire that you skillfully and effectively use the word, not only in prayer, but definitely when praying. Prayer is absolutely vital and necessary for all of us. It is not just for intercessors or prayer warriors, for, for we are all called to prayer and, and we can all do so effectively because of the Holy Spirit. Understand this, none of us has arrived when it comes to prayer. We all are on a lifelong journey with the Holy Spirit in his school of prayer. He wants you to partner with him, pray in accordance with his will, and see tremendous results, not only in your individual circumstances, but also in this world as we advance the kingdom of God, demolishing the kingdom of darkness and the powers of the enemy. My prayer for you is that you will become even more actively and intentionally engaged in the discipline of daily prayer. I pray that according to Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, you will devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. May Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 come to full fruition in your life where you pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests being alert, and that you always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen. This has been Monday Morning Motivation. Join me again next Monday at 6 o'clock in the morning for another devotional. Have an awesome week.